here are our two EVA agents, VP and RZ. They are using our XML time alarm animation system, as you can see by their breathing animation. The toolboxes they are carrying are separate objects that are tracking their position and keeping in place. Now they are demonstrating the head tracking code by inspecting the bike. Notice how their heads are tilted forward. Now, after the astronauts perform drop toolbox quad, the toolbox objects stop tracking the astronauts and are now tracking the quads. You can't really see, but the toolboxes are sitting nicely in the tray of each quad. As part of the XML time alum system, animations can blend in and out. Watch the animation smoothly go from walking to standing. Climbing on the quad is the longest animation in the simulation at 14.9 seconds. The overhead of this one animation significantly slowed down the system. You may notice they don't sit perfectly on the quad as it takes up to 90 minutes to record this 9 minute movie, quick tweaking becomes an impossibility. Now, if you notice that as they started to ride off, the time clock jumps upwards by 4 seconds. This is because of the processing time taken to create the path to the pump station. As this simulation is recorded at 1 tenth the speed, this pause is really 40 seconds. In order to find a path from one point to another, the code tests its known waypoint to find which series of waypoints will get where it wants to go. Once it has it set, it then performs line of sight tests on the ground, currently up to 10 per waypoint. These tests allow the agent to correctly track the ground and go up and down hills. A lot of time was spent developing the system, particularly the buggy. Its use is no doubt beyond the original purpose of the testing functions, using it to track the surface mesh of a high detail viewpoint model. In the end, a workaround was developed allowing the agents to correctly track the terrain model's surface. The camera panning is also a coded effect. It is rotating the camera to track the point that is halfway between each of the agents. The agent's floating text status displays are actually separate viewpoint models that continuously track the location of the agents and float above their heads. They also do line of sight tests, so they turn off if there is something obstructing them. Unfortunately, at the moment, they do cover up the agent when seen from a distance, but the effect is minimal. Similar is the status text and time at the bottom of the display. This is actually a viewpoint model that is tracking the camera position, continuously placing itself in front of the camera to be seen. Watch the bikes crest the hill. See that they track the angle of the ground as well, tilting forward to drive down the slope of the embankment. Currently, the sound paths are not tested for correctness. For example, it would happily drive up a cliff or turn the bikes on a dime. This would dramatically increase the processing time required. This is why you will see the bikes skid into place. Here is the get on quad animation again, being played in reverse to produce a get off quad animation. This is a feature of the XML time alum animation system. Now, VP will radio SB in the hab to let him know that they have arrived at the pump station. The astronauts then grab their toolboxes, take them to the pump and put them down. This is again a demonstration of objects following other agents. BP notifies SB that they are ready to start the pump. In the hab, CC informs SB that he is in place and ready to monitor the tank. SB then instructs RZ to begin pumping. RZ passes this along to VP, who bends down, opens the toolbox and takes out the wrench and walks to the pump. The bend down animation is again a victim to tweaking. BP starts to pump and RZ notifies SB at the hat that the pump is running. In the hat, BP is waiting for the water to reach the tank.
open it down to inform this day and then pass this information along to an engineer. During this period of time, this day is watching the tank pass inside of that site to SB, who then passes them on to the report. Once the tank is nearly full, CC tells SB, who tells RZ. RZ then instructs BP to shut off the pump. Once the pump is off, VP radios the HAB to tell them that the pump is off and they are returning to the habitat. The two astronauts pack up their toolboxes, walk back to the quads, load them up, mount up and ride off. You will have noticed that there is always a few seconds between each action, such as walk, drop toolbox, get on quad, etc. These pauses are not completely necessary and proper Brahms simulation code probably wouldn't have any, but they have been included here mostly to ensure that the simulation does not get behind, as actions may take a little longer than they should. The use of padding time allows incorrectly long actions to eat into the padding rather than delaying the entire simulation. As I mentioned before, the pathfinding will break up one straight line up into 10 subsections. For example, the ride to the pump station takes 18 sections, created using two waypoints. This means that while the ground is tracked closely, it will on occasion miss a feature of the terrain. For example, as it comes over the crest of the hill, the wheels actually sink slightly into the ground. Increasing the detail and complexity of the pathfinding code will avoid this, however, this would have a negative effect on performance. It is simply a case of finding a happy medium. A feature not shown in these movies is the database client synchronization. This is a system that means that two people watching the simulation will be watching the same actions at the same time, give or take a few seconds. One of the viewers is being the controller and provides the database with constant updates of the simulation state. Any other clients loading the simulation will realise they are out of sync and will receive all of this state information from the database and be synchronised to within one action. Any actions currently happening on the controller will appear to join in clients to already be performed. So, if someone was to join the simulation at this point, they would see the quads and riders already at the habitat. However, they would sit there waiting until the controller has reached the habitat as well before moving on to the next command, get off quad. As the riders approach the habitat, they enter the last section of their path. Each point's orientation has been correct so far, yet to end the path, the quads have been told to be facing the same direction they were originally. More complex pathfinding would create a curving path that swings the quads in an arc, but the current code just causes the agents to look like they've been taking defensive driving calls. The agents dismount from the quads and thus reach the end of the current simulation.